Hey, Jim. Um, it's great to talk to you today. I wanted to talk to you about bringing broadband to communities here in the US. It seems like it's still a huge challenge. What do you see as the biggest barriers today? And how can solutions like fixed wireless access help close that gap, that digital divide? Steve, you're right. I mean, the, the biggest problem we have is obviously getting the coverage out to a good portion of the United States. The United States is vast. The biggest issues right now is cost, you know, the CapEx. If you're trying to put fiber in the ground or across the United States, there just is not enough money out there to do that. Uh, number two is, we'll call it, We'll call it traditional FWA, if you will, you know, the 5G type items that you see maybe some of the carriers offer. That's very limited. They can't offer that to as many people as you would think you could do that to. So we kind of fill this gap in the middle that that's very good for what we try to do to deploy in the United States. Using unlicensed technology, you can go out to rural environments. You can reach a lot of customers very quickly, low cost of entry and offer a fiber-like service to them. Is it 5G based? It's not. So what we do is essentially have a solution that has a access point that's up on a tower. We utilize Wi-Fi. You know, we use Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 6 as, a, as the catalyst, that spectrum, that five, six gigahertz range. And it reaches out to customer sites where you have another radio. And then we use that unlicensed spectrum to give them broad dead connectivity. So that eliminates one of the biggest problems right out of the gate, right? Licensing. License, absolutely. So, for example, in the United States where you have wireless ISPs, WISPs, they have basically were able to fill in a gap that the other carriers weren't able to do because they don't have to buy licenses. They don't have to buy spectrum. They can turn up services very quickly. As a matter of fact, even the larger carriers are looking at these type of technologies one for stopgap methods where they know they don't have fiber or it's very costly to even get microwave put in. It's going to take them months, if not quarters, to try to get that taken care of. Now they can turn items up within hours. What sort of range can you get with that? We're dealing with access points that are, let's say, two feet by two feet, just to make it easy. It's a square size, fits up on a tower, water tower, structure building. And then you have a customer device that's going to be something the size, smaller than your laptop, if you will, that will go on the side of a house. You know, we're able to, if we're dealing in an environment where you have one, we'll call access point, which is our central point, and you can go out and talk to your 25, 50 clients, customers out there, you're talking a range of five to 10 miles. Uh, and it also then depends on the type of speeds we can offer. But we have circuits now using unlicensed spectrum in point-to-point -point mode. You know, we're going 40, 50 kilometers in certain parts of the world utilizing unlicensed technology. Have you been disappointed by the, the, the progress on the regulatory side with things like BEAD? We'll say yes, uh, especially in the U.S. The biggest issue that you have with BEAD funding, government funding, those type of programs they take a long time. Are you making any changes to those in, in response to market needs? Do you have any plans to add features or, or modify uh, sort of the feature mix on the products which you're selling? Well, let's give uh, simple answers, yes. We are part of the Reliance Geo family. Reliance Geo is one of the world's largest telecom providers out of India. Their numbers are somewhere in the north of 480 million mobile users. We are part of that solution set. We've had to become carrier grade. You know, this isn't for just tier three, tier two. Why is, you know, if one of them's looking at a choice between fiber or fixed wireless access, why is it so important to have an alternative to fiber? Just make that live for us a little bit, Jim. When you're dealing with fiber, first off, fiber is a great technology, right? You can get a lot of bandwidth, a lot, and you know, theoretically will last a long time. The biggest issue is getting it done. When a carrier wants to go out and try to deploy a fiber network, they have to plan at the least nine months, maybe even two years ahead of time to go through the permitting cycles. That's a lot of money. So that's why you try to utilize like a Momosa equipment, an FWA environment where you can bypass that, where permitting is no longer the major item. 
where you can now go in and cross over barriers using an unlicensed spectrum that is open to everyone and you can do it today. We were dealing with just a customer here recently that was more used to the permitting cycle we just talked about. And we showed them the solution and they said, well, how many weeks is it going to take? And we're like, we're going to have it up in an hour. <laughs> it's going to be ready to go. So the speed, the efficiency, and be able to outreach and also do it at speeds that is almost fiber-like is pretty compelling. Jim, thanks for giving us an education on this today. I really appreciate it. And also, congratulations on this MIMO launch. When, when is that official? When are you announcing that? We've already announced it, actually, at Wispapalooza a little bit over a month ago, and we will be shipping out product here in the next 30, 60 days. Congratulations, Jim. Thanks, Steve. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.